time in Knaresborough, North Yorkshire. It's a pretty little market town just four miles east of Harrogate. Well, slap bang in the centre of Knaresborough is a very interesting opportunity. Up for auction is a retail unit, guide price 110,000 quid, with the added advantage of accommodation of a bit. This place was once known locally as the Crooked Lintel, and a quick look at the outside will tell you why. Luckily, that lintel isn't part of the main building, so it's not going to cause a long-term structural worry. And, in fact, I think it adds a bit more character to what's already an attractive frontage. So, in a previous life, this place was actually a sandwich shop. Oh, you can see the list of sandwiches here. One point eight for a tuna mayo. Those kind of prices, I can't understand why it closed, but maybe they were too cheap. But anyway, what have we got? Basically, one large retail space, so it has got the planning permission for that, which is always useful. Um, one main area here, going back there, there's the kitchen preparation area, downstairs for a reasonably large cellar. Um, yeah, it's a bit tidy, it obviously needs sorting out, but not too bad, and there's more upstairs. The shop area is quite big, and with storage space in an outhouse at the back and in the cellar too, it could lend itself to any number of business ventures. Add to that its prime location on the high street, and I'm guessing that it could be quite a money spinner. But the place is more than just a commercial opportunity. In some ways, up here is more interesting and potentially exciting than downstairs, because you've got Basically, what could be a really nice flat. Area there, which would be your kitchen, it's just got a sink in it at the moment, so it actually just needs a bit of work to sort that out. You've got a, a bathroom there, which doesn't have a bath. All it has is a loo, but it's big enough to stick a bath in. Through into what I guess would be your living room. View out onto the high street, so you'd probably want to put double glazing in there to keep the noise down, but it's not a bad size space. Lovely little touch. That is an original Georgian fireplace, so that's nice to have. So all in all, not bad. This place only gets complicated when it comes to the lease on it. This is actually a leasehold property, but you might not know, but there are two different kinds of leases that exist. Absolute leasehold and good leasehold. This particular property's got a good leasehold, and that basically means the land registry can't prove who owns the freehold of the actual building. What does it mean in practice? Well, nothing actually, because this place, for instance, has got a 700-year lease left to run. But some mortgage companies don't like good leasehold. How can you get around it? Well, you can take out a cheap insurance policy, it'll cost you 60 to 100 quid. That'll guarantee the mortgage company that they're not going to have any problems, and you have got it sorted. It seems complicated at first sight, but it's actually quite straightforward. And it's things like this that can put potential buyers off. So do all your research properly, and you could end up with a bargain. And talking of research, there's just a little more to see here. Up here on the top floor, what have we got? Well, <laughs> yes, another bathroom. Oh, it's so pink. What a completely, ridiculously huge bathroom for the size of the building. This is a perfect bedroom, isn't it? Add that to the large bedroom across the landing with another fantastic period fireplace, and you have an attractive two-bedroom flat on your hands. But with the commercial premises downstairs to think about as well, is there really a market for it here in Knaresborough? I invited along a local estate agent to find out. The property is situated right at the head of uh, Knaresborough High Street, uh, prime location, very convenient for the other shops, and I think it would feed well off other shops in the area. So the commercial property could do well. One way of maximising the potential here might be to rent out the flat separately. So, what kind of income could that bring in? A one-bedroom apartment in this area, you're going to be looking at somewhere in the region of 375 to 400 pounds a month, and a two-bedroom apartment somewhere probably 450, 475 a month. To rent the shop as a, a lock-up entity, I will be looking at somewhere around 5,000 pounds a year. That would give a total income of around 10 to 11,000 pounds per year. There's not much work to do here, so if a buyer got it anywhere near the 110,000 pound guide price, that's not a bad return. Selling the two parts on separately would mean creating a new lease, and that could be more tricky with this property. 
But it's not an insurmountable problem, and with two-bedroom flats selling locally for as much as 130000 it could be worth the hassle. Overall, I think this is a really flexible lot that would appeal to a wide variety of potential purchasers. But let's find out who it was who got the winning bid at the auction. Lot number seven on the high street in Nasborough. What's this one worth? Who will give me 100,000? 100,000 pounds, look on if we want it. At 100, are you bidding? 100, thank you. At 100,000 pounds, I'm bid. At 100,000 pounds and five. 105, 15, 110, are you bidding now? 110, will you make it 15, sir? I'll put you in for two. 112, 114, are we bidding? 114, will you make it 15, sir? 115 is now a bid. At 115,000, 116, new bidder. 116, 117, sir? 118, may I? 118, 119, 120, will you? 120 it is. And one, sir? 121, 122 is bid. 123, sir? 124, may I? 124 and 5. 125, 6 is it now, sir? 126, are you sure? 500 if you like. At 125,000, then, are you all done? And 500, new bidder. 125, 500, 126. 126 and 500 again. 126 and a half, 127. 127 and a half, 128. 128 and a half, 129. 129 and a half. Yes. Will you fill him up? 130. At 130,000 pounds, then the bid's here. No mistakes. At 130,000, then for the first time. At 130,000 pounds for the second. And absolutely the last time. Are you sure now? Property sold. Gentleman sitting right in front of me. Thank you very much. That very relieved looking winning bidder was Andy, a local property developer. I met him at the old sandwich shop to find out more about his plans for it. Andy, nice to meet you. Hi. <laughs> How's your sandwich making skills? <laughs> Nil. <laughs> Absolutely. So you're not going to open this place as a new sandwich shop then? I am not going to run it at all. It's certainly going to be run by somebody else. I've got no skill that way. Tell me why you wanted to buy it. Well, I love Nairsborough, and I think that Nairsborough's high street should be a lot more vibrant than it is. Uh, so having made a success of a shop just four doors down, I wanted to buy another one and this just was ideal. What's your other shop? It's two flats above and a bolty takeaway downstairs. Andy's certainly done his research. As he has a very similar property just a few doors down, he knows just what it'll take to repeat that winning formula. What I do believe is that the prime need of shops in this area is to service the local people. I think there's been too much attempt to try and do tourist shops when tourism is a small proportion of the economy in this town. You're speaking in a very knowledgeable kind of way. Well, I've lived in Nairsborough since I was 11, and I've been a councillor in Nairsborough for 20 years. So You're a councillor? I'm not now, no. They voted me out at the last election. <laughs> <laughs> It's clear that all those years as a councillor have given Andy a great insight into the type of property this community needs. He thinks he knows what might have held this place back in the past. I believe that one of the reasons it hasn't worked too well is because the rent has been too high for the shop because there's been paying for all the space above without using it. So my idea is to let this off as a shop with the cellar and the kitchen at the rear and bring up some stairs up the rear outside, coming into what is a toilet of the flat above. So then it would be completely self-contained? Yes. Andy plans to maximise the potential of this place by splitting the commercial and residential parts and targeting two separate markets. A very shrewd move, I think. It's one that means that Andy has already had offers to turn the downstairs area into a boutique, a record shop or a new cafe. So, what's it going to be? Well, the person with the record shop is, is a friend of mine and therefore I'm probably more mindful to support his position. But I want him to be absolutely clear that it's financially viable because obviously the music business is, with downloading, etc., is becoming more vulnerable. Do you give them a rent-free period? Yeah, absolutely. I think 
I would not be looking for any rent until at least after it's occupied and work uh, actually trading. I believe that it's only reasonable to allow people to, to set up, get their investment that way. To me, sustainability is much more important than quick profit. So, what about the amount of money it's going to cost you to get this place sorted out? Well, I don't think it's going to cost too much. The architect's planning side of it is going to cost something like a couple of grand to, to get the whole lot sorted, uh, building regs, etc. And then I imagine it's going to cost something in the region of about another eight grand to, to get it all as I want it. And how long do you think it's going to be to do the work? I think we should be, well, quite possibly, we could be up and running on the shop in, inside three weeks. You know, really, oh, really wow. quickly. Yeah, because there's very little to do. And it's quite a few of the people who I've spoken to would be quite happy to, to rent the shop and let me knock through the back while they're renting it. Obviously, to reduce rent, so we wouldn't be necessarily getting rented at that time, but, but the shop will be starting to be occupied. The flat will take longer without question, um, and I'm not quick. I have to own up to being fairly slow, in fact, to be quite honest. Uh, so I would expect it'll be about four or five months. Well, some good luck with it all. I hope it turns out just great for you. Right, lovely. Thank you. All the best. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>
We're going to go down into the basement, and that's going to be uh, musical instruments, sheet music, and things like that. Uh, we're already in touch with the schools, and we're selling recorders and things at the moment. And then through the back, we're stripping the kitchen down that's been in there, and we're going to have an internet cafe in there. A diverse plan, and one that Andy is obviously hoping will succeed and bring in good rental income. He expects to take just over £400 a month in rent from the shop. He's spent £130,000 buying the property and his renovation costs have risen from £10 to £15,000. So will income from the flat be enough to make a healthy profit? <coughs> to find out, let's ask two local estate agents. What do they think now the work is well underway? I think the property is very interesting indeed, a very interesting investment property. Um, it's a mix obviously of commercial with the shop downstairs, uh, which is in a very good location, it's the best end of the high street. I think small shop units like we have downstairs are quite in demand for little businesses who haven't got much capital to play with. Um, in the long term, I don't know how that would work out, but certainly for somebody paying £100 a week, it gives them a good footing on the uh, business ladder. So, with the right tenants, Andy could continue to make around £5,000 a year from the shop. But what about the flat? As a two-bedroom department, I will be looking between £450 and £460 per calendar month. Possibly as much as £525 per calendar month. Well, I've agreed a figure with somebody of £115 a week, which is roughly where they are. If Andy can finish the work quickly and get his new tenant in, then that will bring his total income to just over £11,000 a year from this shop and flat. If he sticks to his budget, then he'll have spent a total of £145,000 on the property, so he could be making a reasonable profit. But what if he were to sell? The value of the total premises, uh, the shop and the apartment, I believe is in the region of £175,000, possibly £180,000. With a decent lease, I would be looking at somewhere between £190,000 and £200,000. So it looks like that £130,000 purchase price at the auction was a good one. I'm very glad to have put my hand up and, and decided that that's what I've paid, and I think the price that I paid was a fair price. But I get the most pleasure out of doing old properties up where I can actually contribute something to the street scene, etc., and you end up with something occupied that previously wasn't. If he sticks to his budget, Andy could come away with around £50,000 profit. But for the time being, he's just happy knowing that this place will now be occupied. Well, that's all for now on Homes Under the Hammer. We'll have more auction properties for you next time. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Goodbye. For additional programme information, visit our website at bbc.co.uk forward slash homes. World on the Move is a natural history series which follows the planet's great animal migrations. BBC Radio 4 has the latest, or you can go online to catch up with the programme so far.